Peace and blessings, beautiful people. Peace and blessings. This is Empress Imani, and welcome to this episode of Sacred Love Lessons. Closing my eyes to connect with my roots, I sense the wisdom of my ancestors and my grandmother's smiles. The Gossamer Path. I'm Empress Imani, inspirational teacher of Sacred Love Lessons. I have women to honor the law within so they too can manifest the life of their dreams. We're in season five. Be your own guru. 12 Secrets of the Sacred Saber. Sacred Love Lessons is brought to you by House of Sacred Love, where every day is self-love day. Be inspired to honor yourself with clear intentions, release what no longer serves you, claim your freedom, and head in the right direction to manifest the life of your dreams. You can book your life-changing one-on-one clarity session today at houseofsacredlove.com. That is houseofsacredlove.com. Our objective today is to break the chains of generational conditioning. But before we start, let's tap into our root chakra energy. Wherever you are, take a seat if you can and sit comfortably somewhere where you feel rooted, where you feel grounded, where you feel stable and then as you sit take a deep breath and exhale when you inhale imagine yourself being the beautiful vessel that you are sitting strong and stable When you exhale, imagine releasing all the things that need to go. Inhale. Exhale. Now just take a moment as you sit wherever you're sitting, whether you're in your car, you're in your home, you're at the office, wherever you are. Sit there with your eyes closed and smile. Sit in this energy for just a moment. Now that we are in the root chakra energy, let's get into the root chakra. The root chakra provides us with our drive for life and motivation to live and get started. It is the foundation that all other chakras within our body build upon. The root chakra known as our survival center has an on and off pulse. It comes with the life force energy, momentum, stress, and pressure. This is the center where we feel adrenaline and pressure to do something. It is connected to our adrenaline system and stress hormones and affects various parts of our body. The root chakra can affect our survival instincts and resilience our sense of belonging, our strength and courage, our focus and direction, our desire to try and start new things. Our root chakra is a vessel for the collective wisdom, experiences, and energies of our ancestors. It carries generational trauma and patterns passed on by our ancestors, family, and caregivers. Our root chakra also carries inherent gifts, talents, and genetic traits. Our ancestors' experiences, both positive and negative, can be energetically passed down through generations. These experiences can manifest as emotional patterns, fears, or beliefs stored in our root chakra. By understanding and addressing these ancestral patterns, we can heal old wounds and create a stronger foundation for ourselves. When people talk about breaking the chains or breaking generational curses, they are referring to healing ancestral wounds within the root chakra. When the root chakra is balanced, you feel satisfaction, success, peace, and joy. You feel safe and secure about your finances, shelter, and other matters. 
You feel connected to yourself, others, and the worlds around you. You trust that the world can provide for your basic needs. You have the motivation to take action and overcome challenges. And you focus on your relationships and personal goals. Now, when your root chakra is out of balance, you feel burnout, anxiety, overwhelm, depression, frustration, anger, bitterness, and disappointment. An out of balance root chakra can affect your physical health and your overall well being. You may also lack the passion and motivation to live. So let's talk about the root chakra frequency. How do you tap into this frequency? Well, the first thing you want to do is breathe. That was the first thing that we did today. We just took a deep breath. Take deep breaths. If you ever find yourself in a stressful situation, don't panic. Don't panic. Take a deep breath. A lot of times when we're in those situations, we begin to hold our breath. Our breath becomes very shallow. So the first thing that you want to do is just take a deep breath. It will enhance your calm immediately. Number two, take time to rest regularly. Whatever that looks like for you, take time to rest. Your body will thank you. Number three, ask for and accept help as needed. Now, I know this is a big one for some people. Some people do not like to ask for help. That's pride. Okay, and that's maybe that's your lesson. I don't know, but it is okay to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. Number four, create your reality with your words. This is a really big one for me. This is why I'm always, always, always sharing affirmations with you because affirmations is a way that you create your own reality. So use your words to speak life into your life. Number five. Listen to 396 Hertz and or chant the word LOM, LOM. Number six, this is one of my favorite ones, visualization. Visualize divine white light filling your root chakra. Now the color for the root chakra is red, but for me, I like to use divine white light and I use it for everything. I use it for divine protection, I use it to help align my chakras, to balance me out, divine white light. Number seven, massage. Massage your glutes, your legs, and your feet. And this will help you increase your blood flow. This will help you feel more rooted and more secure within your body. Plus it just feels good. Sometime when I'm just sitting and I'm doing other things, but I'm sitting, I would just rub myself. I rub my legs, my thighs, I rub my feet. It's okay to massage yourself, right? And that's free. You don't have to go pay someone to do that. You can do that for yourself. So massage. Number eight, practice grounding. This is something that we did earlier where you just sit, preferably on your root chakra, connected to the ground. Now, if you're in a situation where that's not possible for you, or you have difficulty, because some people do, have difficulty sitting down like in lotus position or cross leg position, that's okay. You can just sit however is comfortable for you, but preferably you want to sit with your root chakra, which is your pelvic area. You want to place your bottom on the ground, okay? Number nine, use crystal energy. You guys have heard me talk about this time and time again before. You can engage red jasper, black calcite, bloodstone, or smoky quartz. Those are some really good crystals for the root chakra. Ultimately, the best stone for you is the one that resonates with you personally. So you can just use your intuition, trust your intuition when choosing a crystal for you. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a chain breaker exercise. That's what I call a chain breaker exercise. Our objective in this exercise is to connect with our ancestor energy and heal our root chakra. This exercise requires that you come with grace, compassion, forgiveness, self-awareness, honesty, and understanding. Remember, every thought, word, and choice we make is an act of creation. 
So the first thing that you want to do when going through this exercise is identify the patterns. That's the first thing you want to do. Identify the patterns. You know, you've heard people say, recognizing that there is a problem is half the solution. So step one, identify the patterns. Recognize the recurring behaviors, emotions, or beliefs within your family. Number two, understand the impact. Explore how these patterns have affected you personally and intergenerationally within your family. Number three, challenge your beliefs. Question the validity of inherited beliefs and whether they align with your values. For example, one pattern I noticed in my family was overgiving. People in my family are sensitive to the needs of others. So we have a lot of healthcare workers, social workers, people who are in service industry. We have a lot of that in my family. This sensitivity often leads to overgiving to one's own detriment, fostering codependence. Now, for those of you who are into human design, this would be gate 19, okay? I have the whole channel, 1949, but this would be gate 19 specifically in the root center. So codependency is a pattern or behavior where an individual excessively relies on another person to meet their emotional and psychological needs. This often involves neglecting one's own needs and desires to prioritize the other person's well-being. Key characteristics of codependency include people-pleasing, constantly seeking approval and validation from others, difficulty setting boundaries, struggling to say no or assert personal needs, low self-esteem, feeling inadequate or unworthy, caretaking, that's gate 19, caretaking, overly focused on the needs of others, often at the expense of your own, difficulty expressing emotions, suppressing feelings to maintain peace, fear of abandonment, intense anxiety about being alone or being rejected, Codependency can also be expressed as the patterning of thinking that I'm not okay unless you're okay. Needing to control the other person's behavior or emotions to feel safe or holding back your truth to make the other person happy. So I asked myself, what was I doing? I was overgiving. The answer is I was overgiving to my own detriment. I would give my last of everything, my money, my time, my energy, my love. What I really wanted, more than anything, was I wanted to be seen, heard, and valued. I thought that if I loved hard and gave much, somehow people would love me and give back to me. I thought they would see the value and intentions that I was bringing to the table. Unfortunately, they did not. I lived by the ride or die ideology. However, the only person who was dying was me. I felt anger and frustration all the time. Even though many times I had a smile on my face, underneath that I was very angry and frustrated and disappointed. Eventually, I depleted myself my energy, my time, my love, and my money. So, what did I do? I took a step back. I took a step back to look into the mirror. It took me years to get to this point where I am today. It didn't happen overnight. It was little by little, gradually. With each relationship, I examined myself and I worked on myself. So here are the steps that I took to break the pattern of codependency within my family. The first thing is I identified the pattern. I grew tired of one-sided relationships in which I was doing most of the work, I was either doing most of the work or giving unreciprocated energy. It was unrequited love. I felt like people took me for granted, seeing my kindness and love as weakness. 
I often felt unseen, unheard, devalued, and underestimated. Sometimes that works for me though, especially in court, that worked for me. But I didn't like it, right? I didn't like that. As a result, I got really angry and I used that anger. Yes, I used shadow energy to fuel me into action. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend that you use anger because, you know, just being in that energy is not good for you. When you're angry, it's like the incredible hug. You know, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. A lot of times you say things and you do things out of emotion, out of anger, that you really, you mean in that moment, but overall, you really don't mean that. You really don't want that outcome, right? You don't want that. You're speaking out of frustration. And I did that a lot. And I know along the way when I think way back when I'm talking about way back I'm talking about you know coming through as a teenager as a young adult like back then I was very vicious and people who know me from back then they know I was very vicious and then coming all the way through coming up it was like even then my cutoff game was strong it was very strong and so I wouldn't recommend that because when you're in that state your body releases keep in mind what i told you the root chakra controls the adrenaline system so your body will start releasing chemicals hormones cortisol high levels of cortisol that is no bueno that affects your health it affected my health you walk around angry you got your blood pressure up you releasing cortisol high levels of cortisol that makes you gain weight that is no when you're stressed out that's what's happening so i wouldn't normally recommend that you use shadow energy but if you're already there you already angry use it for your highest good and that's what I did so I used my anger for my highest good I got into number two self-examination so I had to check myself I wanted people to see hear and value me but I wasn't seeing hearing and valuing myself so I was asking for people to give me something that I wasn't even giving myself. And I apologize. Let me just say, I apologize to all those people. If you're in this category, I apologize to you. My bad. Okay? My bad. So I examined my identity, my behavior, my motives, my values, and my desires. So you guys already know the first question I asked myself. Who am I? Yes, because you, you must know thyself. That is the root. Knowing yourself is the root of everything. So I asked myself, I said, who am I? What do I stand for? What do I really want? Why am I here? Who's for me? What and who do I need to release? Oh yeah, it got real. I used the life sorter to sort out my relationships and situationships I'll leave a link if you want to download that or just you know if you're just curious being nosy whatever and you just want to see what it was that I used to sort out my relationships I'll leave a link and you can download your own copy and you might like it okay answering these questions ushered in clarity for me I forgave myself I forgave everyone for everything okay a lot of people I had to go back to and ask for forgiveness. It's like that 12-step program, step nine, you know? I had to go back and make amends and ask people to please forgive me because I was unaware of myself, right? Unaware. So, forgiveness. And at this point, I just wanted a clean slate. And forgiveness is the foundation. That's what sets that in motion because the person you're setting free is yourself and I wanted freedom more than anything in the world I wanted to be able to see I wanted to see myself clearly I wanted to see others clearly I wanted to see the pattern I wanted to see the ancestral pattern that was in my family clearly okay so then number three once I found out who I was oh my goodness I embodied my goddess energy Oh, yes, I did. I embodied my goddess nature. I tapped into my higher self. Yeah. Once I understood who I was, who I am, I no longer looked up to people. 
I no longer put people on a pedestal. None of that. I clearly know who I am and the power I hold. Yes. And I want that same thing for you. I want it for you too. Number four, I tapped into my self-love using the root chakra frequency. So all those things that I listed before earlier, showing you how to tap into that frequency, I did every one of those things. Every one of those things. I worked on myself every day. Every day, I just set aside time to work on my inner self, to work on me, to be in tune with my goddess self, my higher self. So then I started taking action. I released people from my life. I reclaimed all of my energy back to me because I had just been giving it out, right? Giving it out. I reclaimed all of my energy back to me. And it was just me stating, keep in mind, every thought, every word, every choice we make is an act of creation. You create with your words. It's a way you can create. So I said to myself out loud, I said, I reclaim all of my energy back to me. I reclaim all of my energy from the north, the south, the east, the west. I reclaim all of my energy back to me. I began to just call it back in, call it back in. <laughs> I had a lot to call in, okay? I had a lot to call in, but I called it all back in. Yes, I did. Next, I gathered all the energy that I had been given away and I poured it into myself. Because earlier doing self-examination, I found out who I was, what I like, what I want, who I want in my life, who's good for me, right? All of that. Who had me? Who want me? All of that. So then I invested in my self-care, okay? Checking in with money every day. I invested in my sacred purpose. No longer doing what I was doing before. And no shade to the people that I was doing it for. No shade to them, Okay. I gave it to them. I wanted them to have it. But now I want it for me. Invest in my sacred purpose, my interests, my hobbies. I examined my childhood dreams. I thought all the way back, like, what did I used to do when I was a little girl? What did I want? Then I started doing all those things that I had imagined. All those places I wanted to go see. I wanted to live abroad. All those things, I just began to do it. I said, I want to travel around the world. Like, I want to make the complete circle all the way around. And I did that. The year 2023 and most of 2024, I did that. Then, number five, I set healthy boundaries. Yes, you got to have some healthy boundaries. I set healthy boundaries and standards for myself. I honored myself and the love within me. I stopped chasing people and trying to please them. I invested in my own dreams and I focused on what I had going on. I know I am self-validation and self-acknowledgement. I don't need anybody to pat me on the back and tell me how well I'm doing. I don't need a whole bunch of followers and all this and that. I don't need somebody to shine their light on me. I am the light. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, when you know you cannot unknow. When you know, you cannot unknow. When you see, you cannot unsee. So as a result, I no longer seek validation from anyone or anything outside of myself. I establish reciprocal, reciprocal relationships with mutual benefits. I release all one-sided and unrequited situationships. Number six receive. I received love and help from those who truly loved and cared about me. Are you that person that's always praying for help or complaining that you need help? Then when help show up, you're like, that's okay, I got it. I had to learn how to receive. I was so used to giving without reciprocation that I was guarded against love and help. Love and help may not look like how you envision it. It may not be people from your race, gender, nationality, orientation, or your socioeconomic class. Now, some people, one thing I learned, some people don't really want help. They're afraid that someone else will be seen, valued, and heard. 
They're afraid someone will take their place or steal their shine. Some people don't really want help because they feel like complaining. They feed off chaos and enjoy the attention they get from complaining. Some people don't really want help. Instead, they want pity and sympathy as they embrace the victim and martyr archetypes. They like it when people praise and pat them on the back. I call that the, hey, look at me, see how much I'm doing syndrome. Sidebar, if anything I'm saying is triggering you, you're probably codependent and need some help. In the words of the baby, worry about yourself. Okay, number seven, pass it on. I share what I learned with my family and others. I'm sharing it with you today. So, to break the pattern of codependency within myself, I spent the most time on self-examination. I received help. I did not do this alone. I received help from my spiritual team. Some of them are here in the 3D. Shout out to all of you. You know who you are. Some of them are in 5D. Some of them are in 4D. They all helped me and I'm very grateful. I received help from my soul tribe. I love you guys out there. Thank you so much. I received help from my therapist and nature. I still work on myself and practice gratitude daily to ensure I stay balanced, aligned, and rooted. Going through this process freed me from the ancestral conditioning that had me bound. I'm free and it feels good. Affirmation, I am stability and my foundation is solid. I honor my root chakra energy and manage it wisely. I live my life by design and discernment. I move when my root calls for movement and I rest when my root calls for rest. I know the outside feelings of pressure are not mine to carry and I allow and release those feelings as necessary. All things are working together for my highest good and what is meant for me will not pass me by. I say, and so it is. I'll leave you with this final thought. You can create your own reality. Every thought, word, and choice you make is an act of creation. When your root chakra is awakened and your energy flows freely, you can attract more abundance in every area of your life. The power is yours. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sacred Love Lessons. Be your own guru. 12 Secrets of the Sacred Saber. Wherever you're tuning in in the world, don't forget to click that like button, come in and subscribe. And until we speak again, be the light.